May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. April 2nd, 2024, Tuesday in the Octave of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, Therefore, may the entire house of Israel know most certainly that God has made this same Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they had heard these things, they were contrite in heart, and they said to Peter and to the other apostles, What should we do, noble brothers? Yet truly Peter said to them, Do penance, and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your sons, and for all who are far away, for whomever the Lord our God will have called. And then, with very many other words, he testified and he exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this depraved generation. Therefore, those who accepted his discourse were baptized. And about 3,000 souls were added on that day. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done with faithfulness. He loves mercy and judgment. The earth is full of the mercy of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Behold the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, and on those who hope in his mercy. To deliver their souls from death, and feed them in famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord, for he is our helper and protector. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, as we have hoped in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Sequence Victime Pascoli Lauders Christians, to the Paschal victim offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems, Christ, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous, the Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw, wayfaring. The tomb of Christ, who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen, to Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary Magdalene was standing outside the tomb, weeping. Then, while she was weeping, she bowed down and gazed into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been placed, one at the head, and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have placed him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? Considering that it was the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have moved him, tell me where you have placed him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And turning, she said to him, Rabboni, which means, Teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went 
announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and these are the things that he said to me. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can we deepen our spiritual connection with Jesus, letting go of earthly attachments to embrace the profound union he offers us? Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. John 20 verse 17 Mary of Magdala was one of the first persons to whom Jesus appeared. She was deeply devoted to him, especially because of the great mercy he offered her when he forgave her manifest sins and expelled seven demons from her. After he had done that, Mary became a devout follower and was one of the few who remained faithful to him even as he hung upon the cross. On the first day of the week, the Sunday after the crucifixion, Mary came to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body, in accord with Jewish custom. But when she arrived, Jesus' body was gone. And when Jesus appeared to her as she was weeping, she didn't immediately recognize him, for he had his new glorified body. But when Jesus spoke her name, Mary, she recognized him. But rather than embracing her, Jesus said, Stop holding on to me. Why would Jesus say this? Even though Mary's attachment and devotion to Jesus was beautiful and holy, it wasn't yet perfected. She wanted her Lord, whom she had come to know and followed. She wanted her former relationship with Jesus to be returned to her. But for this reason, Jesus said, Stop holding on to me. Jesus wanted much more. He was telling her that her relationship with him was soon to change for the better. No longer would he simply be her earthly companion, instead, he would soon live within her, dwell within her very heart, become one with her, and be her bridegroom for eternity. But this could only happen once Jesus ascended to the Father in heaven to complete his divine mission of salvation. At times, we also seek favors from our Lord that are purely temporal. Though we do need to trust him for our daily bread, meaning, for all the basic necessities of life, we must realize that the gifts God wants to give us far surpass anything in this world. The supernatural gift of grace, the gift of the indwelling of the Most Holy Trinity, the gift of oneness with our Lord, is what we are made for and is the end goal and desire of our Lord. Reflect today, upon these words Jesus spoke to Mary, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But do so with the knowledge that now, Jesus has indeed ascended to the Father. Therefore, he now invites us all to cling to him as he reigns in heaven. Ponder the deep desire in the heart of our Lord that you cling to him, with every fiber of your being. He wants to dwell within you, to become one with you, and to transform you in every way. This holy union is now being enjoyed for all eternity by Saint Mary of Magdala, and this same gift is being offered to you. Cling to him and never let go, for this will be your eternal joy. Let us pray. My risen and ascended Lord, you now reign in heaven in perfect glory and splendor. Draw me into your glorious life and invite me to cling to you with all my heart. I invite you, dear Lord, to come and make your dwelling within me so that I can hold on to you forevermore. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.